Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series on Bayesian Confirmation Theory and the Paradox of Dogmatism. This is part of our larger series on Bayesian Epistemology. If you haven't watched the videos leading up to this video, I would highly suggest that you do, unless you have a really good sense of Bayes' theorem and the Dutch book arguments. With that out of the way, let's get started. So today we're going to be looking at confirmation and disconfirmation of hypotheses. Basically, how for people that believe in Bayesian epistemology, hypotheses can be confirmed or disconfirmed. The cool thing about Bayesian epistemology is we have a really quantitative, logical approach to confirmation and disconfirmation. We have a very exact way to explain whether or not some specific piece of evidence confirms or disconfirms a hypothesis. Let's take a look. So for confirmation, evidence E confirms theory H if and only if our degree of belief in H is increased if E is known. Or in other words, E confirms H if and only if our initial probability that H or our initial degree of belief that H is less than our final probability that H, our final degree of belief that H, or our degree of belief that H given that E, conditional on E. This should make sense, basically, if our degree of belief becomes higher when we gain evidence E, it would seem that E has in some way confirmed our belief that H. But let's take a look at a specific example. So imagine that you're not sure whether or not global climate change is taking place. You would assign the proposition global climate change is taking place exactly a 0.5 degree of belief. You don't hold the belief one way or the other way. And we're also going to talk about the evidence, which is the majority of scientific experts agree that global climate change is taking place. So you are also not sure about this proposition either. You don't know whether or not the majority of scientific experts agree or not. So you'll also assign that a 0.5 degree of belief for your initial degree of belief on that. However, you're pretty confident in the majority of scientific experts. You think that if global climate change is taking place, then probably the majority of scientific experts are going to agree. And if the majority of scientific experts agree, probably global climate change is taking place. So you're going to assign the probability of both E and H 0.45, which is relatively high. It may not seem that high in the grand scheme of things, but remember, the highest you could assign that is 0.5, with the prior probabilities that you have above of 0.5 and 0.5 for H and E. So 0.45 out of 0.5 is actually doing pretty well. Now, based on this information, we can tell what you should change your belief in H2 if you are shown that E. What you should change your belief in global climate change to if you are shown that the majority of scientific experts agree on it. So we have our initial probabilities. Now imagine that you're told that E is the case, that the majority of scientists do agree that global climate change is taking place. We know that our final probability, our final degree of belief for H, is equal to H conditional on E. Well, we can find H conditional on E using Bayes' theorem, which is just H and E over E. We have all of those pieces of information. So we put 0.45 over 0.5. If you work that out with the math, you get 0.9 as our new degree of belief in H. Because 0.9 is greater than 0.5, because you now have a higher degree of belief in the claim that global climate change is taking place than you did before, that's going to mean that this evidence, the evidence that the majority of scientists agree on it, is going to confirm that claim, because your final probability of H is greater than your initial probability of H. Your belief in global climate change would increase if scientists agreed about it. So the evidence confirms the hypothesis. On the other end of the spectrum, we have disconfirmation, which is just going to be exactly what you would expect, the exact opposite. Evidence E disconfirms a theory H if and only if our degree of belief in H is decreased if E is known. Or in other words, E disconfirms H if and only if our initial probability is higher 
then our conditional probability or our final probability or our probability of h given that e. Hopefully that makes sense right now, but we'll do an example just to make it clear. So let's take h as there is no afterlife. And let's say you have a pretty high degree of confidence in this h, a 0.95. You're really sure that there is no afterlife. E is the evidence that you die, you know that you die. You wake up and see shining golden gates amidst a landscape of clouds. You think this is pretty unlikely, probably not going to happen, but you never know. So you give it a 0 0.05 degree of belief, almost zero, but not quite. And finally, the claim that both E and H, that there is no afterlife, and in fact, you wake up to shining golden gates after you die. Those seem to be pretty contradictory claims, so you're going to assign that a very small degree of belief, a 0 0.01 degree of belief. You really doubt that if you died and then woke up to the pearly gates, that would mean that there still is no afterlife. With those pieces of information, we can take a look at this hypothesis. So now imagine that you do in fact die and you wake up in front of the pearly gates after death. You're like, well, my, I was wrong. You will need to reevaluate your beliefs based on the fact that E. So the probability of H final is going to be equal to the probability of H conditional on E. We can find that once again just using Bayes' theorem, which is just going to be H and E over E. We have all of those. That's going to be 0 0.01 over 0 0.05 or 0 0.2. Because 0.2 is less than 0.95, or your final probability of H is less than your initial probability of H, we're going to say your belief in the lack of an afterlife would decrease if you woke up in front of the pearly gates after dying. Therefore, this evidence would disconfirm your hypothesis. Note that you still have a 0.2 degree of belief in they're not being an afterlife. And in fact, depending on the way your probabilities worked out, you could still think it's more likely that there is not an afterlife than that there is an afterlife. The point is, just because it decreases, because it goes down, that means that the evidence disconfirms it. The evidence might not even convince you that much. It might only convince you a little bit against it. All this confirmation is, is just moving your degree of belief down a little bit. In the same way that all confirmation is, is moving your degree of belief up a little bit. So that was confirmation and disconfirmation. Next up, we're going to talk about entailment and some interesting things that come out of entailment. Bayesian dogmatism, and finally, the new paradox of dogmatism. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org. Check out the SCP for more information on Bayesian epistemology, and stay skeptical, everybody.